Good evening. You're watching the news at six with me, Sean Russell. The news at six is all about the day's biggest developing stories. And one of the big developments that happened today was in the Supreme Court, where the government made its stand on pornography very clear. We'll be talking about that with a special guest as well. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. Congress MPs return to the Lok Sabha after suspensions. Parliament remains deadlocked as party sticks to demand for resignations of ministers. The government tells Supreme Court that it is committed to blocking child pornography but insists that it cannot ban adult sites. Temple Stampede claims 11 lies in Deoghar district of Jharkhand. Crowds go out of control during the Shram Somvar celebration. And five people killed and 17 injured in a car bomb blast at the Kabul airport. The Kal Taliban claims responsibility for this suicide attack as well. Well, our top story this evening, on to the logjam in Parliament. And as the Congress leaders return to the lower house of Parliament today, so did the uproar over Lalit Gate and the Vyapam scam. The opposition stayed put on its demand for the resignations of tainted ministers following the adjournment of uh, the House four times. But fissures appeared within the opposition itself, as the Samajwadi Party Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav today told the Congress party that he would not be party to their protest, saying the House must function. He also conveyed his feelings to Speaker Sumitra Mahajan during a meeting she had with party leaders. George Baker. Opposition MPs that had boycotted Lok Sabha proceedings for the last five days came back to the House today as a suspension of 25 Congress MPs ended. However, there was no change in their strategy as the Congress once again accused Sushma Swaraj of having professional links with Lalit Modi. An adjournment motion on the issue was rejected by the Speaker earlier. As the opposition remained adamant on their demand for the resignations of errant ministers, Mulayam Singh Yadav asked the chair to find a way out of the log jam by talks. Sushma Swaraj has done his time here. When there was no opposition to the people here, there was no opposition to the people here. This is what it is. अपने तरफ से वक्तव्य देने से समाप्त होने वाला नहीं है। उन्होंने जो किया है और उनका जो उन्होंने जो कदम उठाया है, वो देश के हित में तो नहीं उठाया। इस पक्ष में हैं कि सदन चले। और ये ज़्यादा दिन तक के असर नहीं होना चाहिए। मैं इस पक्ष में हूँ। कृपा करके मेरी एक आपसे पासा है। हमेशा स the uproar forced the House to be adjourned before question hour could be completed. After question hour, the Speaker summoned opposition parties for talks, but even as the RJD, Samajwadi Party and some other parties attended the talks, the Congress stayed away. Following more uproar, the House had to be adjourned till 2 p.m. When order could not be restored, leader of the Congress Party in Lok Sabha, Mallik Arjun Kharge, asked the Speaker to adjourn the House. But rules also says when the House is not in order, no business can transact, take transaction, will take the place. Then how the chair is allowing the other businesses and when we are in the well, we are suspended. When, you are, when they are speaking, they are putting their views, you are telling that it is as per rule. So, and, and other members, they have got other rules. And we have got other rules. Therefore, I request you, the house is not in order. You kindly adjourn the house. Little work has been done in Lok Sabha during the monsoon session. The opposition has been demanding the resignations of External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Raji over the Lalit Modi issue and that of the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan over the Vyapam scam. With inputs from Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. There was very barely any business that was conducted in the Rajya Sabha as well amid protests. The opposition lashed out at the government for adopting a dictatorial stance and failing to find a solution to the ongoing impasse. The government hit out to the opposition, claiming that the protests are a pretext to scuttle the GST bill. The stalemate between the government and the opposition continued unabated, even in the upper house on Monday. 
Leader of the opposition, Gulam Nabi Azad, said that an impression was being created that Parliamentary Affairs Minister had spoken to Congress leaders to end the stalemate over Lalit Gate and Vyapam scam. But he claimed the reports are far from reality. I want to no meeting in the Albatta on Hune telephone kia tha, Likin wo Katirod ko Torne Kiri and Nita, Wonka Salata, Kimani Speaker Sahabne, Saibane, Congress Campus go Nikala House, Southern Se Pansden Kiri, to Yedi Agar Kuch Logun Se Bath Karsa. Refuting all allegations, leader of the House Arun Jaitley slammed the opposition for employing obstructionist strategy. He also claimed that the real intention of the opposition is to prevent the passage of the GST bill. You can't have a house conducted in a manner where the government is not allowed to speak. Sir, we get an uneasy impression. We get an uneasy impression that the issue of the external affairs minister is only a pretext. Their real reason is they don't want the constitution amendment on the GST to be cleared in this section. The house, it is you as leader of the opposition who has said that dissent and disruption in the house is the part of the democracy. You not once, twice, thrice, no, four times, six times. So okay, as please. Long, it is what you have yes. taught us. Other opposition parties also joined ranks with the Congress in criticizing government's yeah. efforts to end the log jam. Yeah, Deputy Lord Chairman P.J. Curran had to step in to broker truce but failed to pacify the protesting members. We have never that the ruling party is जो हालात बने हुए हैं उन हालातों में कोई भी बीच का या अलग तरीके का रास्ता आपने कभी नहीं दिया ये अलग मीटिंग भी होती थी जो यहां हो रहा वो उस मीटिंग में होता है तो जो चीजें हैं वो फंसी हुई हैं अगर प्रधानमंत्री जी सदन में आकर बात करते अगर प्रधानमंत्री जी एक दिन में मीटिंग बुलाते सबकी तो शायद कुछ समाधान निकलता कहीं ना कहीं कुछ हो सकता है हो सकता हम लोगों के विचार अलग-अलग कुछ हो सकते हैं विपक्ष सीनियर डेमोक्रेसी Government and opposition are e both equally important. For running the house, both are responsibility. Both should come halfway. You meet, discuss, and try to find out a solution. Amid protests, the Motor Vehicles Amendment Bill 2014 was withdrawn. With no reconciliation in sight, the chair adjourned the house till Tuesday. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's go across to our correspondent Vishal Dhea who has been covering all those developments happening in Parliament today. Vishal, uh, the, the legislative business uh, as far as that is concerned, key legislation spending, uh, the government's economic reformed agenda completely stalled and it seems that the conversation is completely broken down between the government and the opposition. Well, yes, you're right. Uh, going by uh, the kind of, uh, you know, verbal exchange uh, which happened between the government and the opposition in both houses, specifically the upper house, uh, it was pretty much clear that, uh, you know, uh, not much effort seems to have been uh, uh, made from both sides. Uh, and that's what uh, both sides were accusing each other of, rather. That, uh, you know, the government was saying that it is the opposition's responsibility. The opposition was saying that the government has not made much of an effort to, you know, uh, to try and, uh, you know, walk at least uh, uh, halfway uh, uh, to the middle. Uh, as far as uh, the legislative business is concerned, Nishan, yes. The uh, legislative business has taken a hit since day one. No, not even a, a you know a single bill has uh, uh, you know the important rather the single important bill has uh, uh, cleared the scrutiny of uh, both houses. In fact, in Rajya Sabha, we have seen uh, uh, these scenes being repeated day after day. And in Lok Sabha also, though there were few days last weeks when uh, uh, the house was conducted and certain bills were passed in the absence of uh, uh, the Congress MPs, some of whom were suspended, others were boycotting uh, the suspension. Uh, so, so obviously, uh, the, the major, uh, you know, uh, uh, the problem out here lies that the government's initiatives, specifically the, the legislative agenda, which deals with the economic reform, such as GST, uh, those bills are the ones uh, which are stuck now. As far as GST is concerned, uh, even, you know, the, the bill which is to be passed by both houses is a constitutional amendment bill. And that particular bill will be one of the first steps to be taken in rolling out the GST regime, which itself is going to take a lot of time, right. at least six months. Uh, so, so even if the first step is not being cleared in this monsoon session, then, uh, you know, it will be delayed further. And that's what, uh, you know, uh, the government's problem right now seems to be, that uh, apart from uh, the political uh, uh, side of it, uh, uh, the, the economic loss uh, uh, to, uh, uh, vis a vis the reforms uh, 
Is this something which the government is trying to uh, find a way out? All right, the government had targeted 2016, first April, as uh, the rollout of the GST. That looks highly unlikely. Now, Vishal Deya, very quickly a response on uh, the opposition unity because we saw uh, in the Lok Sabha today, Mulayam Singh, uh, leader of the Samajwadi Party, is saying that his party is not standing with the Congress anymore. Are there fissures in that opposition unity? Very quickly, we just have 30 seconds. Well, uh, that is something which has been the stand of the Samajwadi Party since day one, that they do not agree with the Congress's demand of, uh, you know, resignation of the external affairs minister, Sushma Suraj. But as far as, uh, you know, uh, uh, disruption in the House is concerned, they might not be shouting slogans, but then once again, Samajwadi Party leaders, both inside Ra Ra Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, have said today that it is the government's responsibility to go ahead and meet the opposition halfway, try and find a solution, a middle path. All right, Vishal, we'll leave it over there. Thank you very much for that analysis uh, from your end. Of course, Vishal, will be keeping a track of all these developments in Parliament as they happen tomorrow as well. Now, the proposed land acquisition bill has been put on hold till the winter session as a fallout of the washout in the monsoon session. A joint parliamentary committee has got an extension to finalise its report on the bill. The decision was taken after the Congress and the Thrimnul Congress opposed to any changes in the retrospective clause of the bill dealing with compensation of... 1894 Act, which was replaced by the 2013 law passed by the UPA government. Earlier, the Parliamentary Committee, headed by BJP's SS Alawalia, had sought time till the 7th of August to submit its report on the Land Acquisition Bill. An opposition party has raised objections over the appointments of governors of Bihar and Himachal Pradesh in the Upper House today. Acting on the centre's uh, central government advice, our president had appointed governors to Bihar and Himachal Pradesh on Saturday, but the Janta Dal United claimed the appointments were done without consulting the concerned chief ministers. JDU MP KC Tyagi gave a notice under Rule 267 for suspension of business over the issue. He also got support from the Samajwadi Party. However, the motion was not allowed by the chair. Nitish Kumar Ji ko radio mein samachar sunne ko mila hai. Okay, now you can close. So, that's okay. You can go. Okay, Tiagi. You can go. 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 You कि ये परंपरा से विपरीत आपने किया है मुख्यमंत्री क्या मना कर देते कि रामनाथ कोविंद को आपने कर दिया तो वो कहेंगे कि मत करिए ये उनको टेलीविजन से मालूम पड़े ये ये अच्छी बात नहीं ये स्वस्थ जो संवैधानिक और संसदीय परंपराएं हैं उनके विपरीत है now to a focus story for this evening. The union government has shown helplessness in enforcing a ban on pornography websites, saying in it, it cannot be present in everyone's bedroom. On a petition asking for a ban on porn sites in the country, Attorney General Mukul Rohatke argued that even though child pornography has to be banned, we cannot become a totalitarian state. In a climb down of sorts, the centre has told the Supreme Court that it cannot do moral policing in the name of curbing child pornography. Arguing for the union government, Attorney General Mukul Rohadgi told the Apex Court that the state cannot be present in every household to check what people were watching in private and interfere with their entertainment. Rohadgi also told the court that there was need for some self-regulation to check the viewing of porn websites, saying the state cannot be totalitarian. The provisions of law 67, 67A and 67B of the Information Technology Act clearly ban transmission of pornography, obscenity and sexually explicit acts. Supporters of the ban, however, say that action should also be taken against companies that transmit pornographic content. Court feels that in the privacy of the room, one can watch. I am saying, no, sir, you cannot watch pornography in the privacy of your room because from A to Z, 1 to 100, it is completely a criminal activity. Last week, the government had blogged over 850 portals that showed adult content on grounds of morality and decency. The order was partially revoked after an angry backlash amid a raging debate on censorship in a democracy. The government ordered internet service providers to shut down sites that promote child pornography, but these service providers say the order is ambiguous and impractical. With inputs from Vipin Chauhan, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. 
And we're joined by Satya Prakash, legal editor at the Hindustan Times, to help us understand. Satya, I want to come to the larger question as far as the right to privacy is concerned. Now, the government making it very clear that we're not a totalitarian regime and we can't uh, invade everybody's bedroom and monitor content that people are viewing. So in that sense, uh, a lot of UN cry that was raised over this ban and the right to privacy, uh, that has been said, uh, has that been addressed? And uh, what about the larger question of the right to privacy? Because the government itself had said that there is no clear uh, definition of that. In fact, uh, for the first time, the government is making a categorical statement that it's a question of personal freedom, a right to privacy, and government cannot do moral policing and it doesn't want to become a totalitarian state. And that's a good thing to hear from the government because there has been lots of hue and cry after the government chose to ban uh, around 857 porn websites. It's nobody's case that uh, people uh, should be watching it openly and there should be, you know, uh, people should be allowed to watch child pornography. In the first place, they asked the government, uh, they asked the Supreme Court that it should be banned. Hmm. But the court flatly refused it, saying that it's a question of personal freedom and who's, uh, somebody watching something in private, the estate cannot be allowed to enter somebody's bedroom, which the Attorney General today conceded and uh, clarified they are on the issue. But in the first place, the government should not have banned these websites. Later, they clarified that the ban is only on child pornography. Mm -hmm. But then, the ISPs, the internet service providers, they were completely confused how to enforce the ban. Even uh, today, the Attorney General conceded before the court that uh, there are technical problems in enforcing the ban. But the best part is that the government has categorically told the court that it cannot ban porn website altogether. The ban is only on child pornography and nothing else. All right, but uh, does this also address the larger question of uh, right to privacy? Because uh, the Attorney General had, uh, if I remember correctly, a few weeks or a month ago or so, I had uh, mentioned in the court that uh, as far as that is concerned, whether we have the right to privacy, that uh, our constitution does not clearly indicate. So does that, uh, this, can we take this uh, sort of uh, representation from the government as a fact that uh, this government at least says that the right to privacy is there? Well, uh, that statement of the Attorney General ward, uh, was made in the case of uh, Aadhaar. Mm. The government is facing challenge to Aadhaar scheme on the ground that there is no law providing for uh, taking biometric details of individuals for Aadhaar. And the ground is that everybody has right to privacy. So if you take somebody's uh, uh, you know, biometric details, that amounts to violation of the privacy. That cannot be done unless you are authorized to do so by a law. Hmm. Because right to privacy is uh, considered to be an important facet of uh, right to life. And which says, Article 21 says, no person shall be deprived of his right to life and liberty except in accordance with procedure established by law. And the petition said, there is no procedure prescribed by the law. In fact, there is no law authorizing the, the government to take uh, biometric details. So that's the challenge. And where the Attorney General said, there is no right to privacy as such, provided in the Constitution. Mm. So, f having made that statement, today's statement should be taken as a climb down from the earlier... Uh, these are two cases, but one person making the statement on behalf of the same central government, it can be taken as a climb down because in the last 10-15 uh, days, uh, uh, the day he made a statement uh, in the uh, Aadhaar case, there has been lots of hue and cry about right, uh, right to privacy and personal freedom. And now it seems the government has realised that the statement was not correct. All right, Satya Prakash, we'll leave it over there, but we'll thank you very much for coming in and helping us understand uh, the proceedings in the Supreme, the Honourable Supreme Court today and how that impacts you and I in terms of the right to privacy. Thanks so much for that, Satya. Well, on that note, we'll take a very quick break. Coming up on the other side, former Telecom Minister Diana Di Maran's interim bail has been cancelled by the High Court, asked to surrender within three days. More on that on the other side. Government in New Delhi. New faces. People are not investing because they are scared of your tax uh, administration. New thinking. The auction process is a fair and good process. You cannot have a one size fit all reform policy. For insights and perspective. Judiciary should be more concerned about corruption within itself. The Modi government's slogan of Achedin Anevali. 
Soon the people's slogan will be हमारे पुराने दिन लौटा दो The biggest show on economic policy. Watch State of the Economy. Welcome back. You're watching the news at six. And now, at least 11 people were killed in a stampede in Jharkhand's Deoghar district today. 30 others were also injured when devotees broke the queue outside the famous Bela Bagan Temple for the annual Swan Som uh, Savan Somvar celebrations. Chief Minister Raghuvar Das has ordered an inquiry and announced compensation as well. Barely weeks after a stampede killed 27 people in the Raja Mandri district of Andhra Pradesh, a similar tragedy taking place in Jharkhand. A swelling crowd went out of control, turning the Savan Somvar celebration into a tragedy outside the Bela Bagan Temple in Devgarh district. दुर्भाग्य की बात है कि सारी हमारी कोशिशों के बावजूद इस प्रकार की घटना हुई और हम इसके लिए बहुत दुखी हैं हमारा पूरा प्रशासन बहुत दुखी है और हम इसको सभी बिंदुओं पर समीक्षा कर रहे हैं और मैं आपको आश्वासन दे सकता हूं कि इस तरह की घटना न हो इसकी हम पूरी कोशिश जी तोड़ कोशिश करेंगे कांवरियों की भारी भीड़ लाइन लगने की होड़ में या लाइन में आगे बढ़ने की होड़ में काफ़ी तादाद में चल पड़े और चल पड़ने के कारण जो कांवरिए लाइन में लगे हुए थे उसके बीच में ये अफरा तफरी हो गई भगदड़ हो गई जिसके कारण ये घटना हुई The injured were taken to nearby hospitals. The chief minister ordered an immediate probe and announced compensation for the victims. Rajya Sarkar ne tay kiya ki pratek mirtak kamariyon ko do lakh rupya aur jo ghayal kamariya hai unko pachas hazar rupya Rajya Sarkar dege. Iske saath saath humne ek high level committee bhi bana diye hai Home Secretary ke adastha mein taaki puri ghatna ki jankari. हाई लेवल कमेटी लेके आएगी उसके बाद सरकार फिर उस कमेटी के अनुसार कार्रवाई करेगी द सेंटर सेड इट रॉस्ट रैपिड एक्शन फोर्स पर्सनल टू देवघर फॉर बेटर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द क्राउड तुरंत ही मैंने आदेश किया है कि एक रैपिड एक्शन फोर्स देवघर के वहाँ के यात्रियों की सुरक्षा के लिए सुविधा के लिए मुहैया कराई जाए और हम और वह फोर्स वहाँ पर भेजी जा चुकी है मैं सभी सभी जितने परिवार हैं मृतक परिवार उन परिवारों के प्रति अपनी संवेदना व्यक्त करता हूँ और इस घटना को बहुत ही दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण और दुखद मानता हूँ Prime Minister Narendra Modi led several other political leaders on Twitter in expressing their condolences. Devgarh witnessed a similar tragedy in August 2007 when five women were killed and 11 injured at the Badrinath Temple. The Shravan month sees over 30 lakh people offering prayers at temples in Devgarh. On Mondays, the spike in numbers brings over 2 lakh people to this tiny town. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And the Madras High Court has cancelled the bail plea of former Telecom Minister Dayanidhi Maran in the alleged illegal telephone exchange case. He's been asked to surrender before the CBI within three days. Maran has been accused by the CBI of misusing his office to illicitly construct an underground telecom exchange at his Chennai residence. CBI claims that hundreds of cables capable of transmitting large volumes of data were used by Maran to benefit Sun TV, owned by his brother Kalanidhi Maran. Time now to take a look at what else is making news across the country and nationwide. Suspected Maoists have torched four vehicles engaged in construction work in Chhattisgarh's Narayanpur district. They also threatened uh, the labourers at the site to leave. The armed group fled into the jungle after torching the vehicles. A comb combing operation has been launched to nab them. The wreckage of the missing Pavanand's chopper has been found this morning in Therab district of Arunachal Pradesh. The chopper went missing six days ago with three on board. The fate of the occupants, including a senior police official, is still not known. A ground search operation has been launched in nearby areas to locate them. Sri Lanka will release 40 Indian fishermen who were arrested for fishing in its territory. The, they were arrested by the Lankan Navy in June this year. The cases against the fishermen have been withdrawn. However, their boats and equipment. to discourage them from crossing the international maritime boundary line and uh, some international news now and days after three deadly attacks in kabul that killed 50 people the afghan capital was hit by another deadly attack five people were killed and 17 injured after a car bomb exploded near the entrance to the kabul airport the suicide bomber drove his vehicle into the first checkpoint and detonated a young child was among those injured in the explosion the incident is the latest in a series of deadly attacks recently after the taliban announced a new leader the terrorist outfit claimed responsibility for the attack
Now, Turkey came under the wave of attacks on Monday. Gunmen from far-left People's Liberation Army targeted a police station and the U.S. consulate in Istanbul. At least six people, policemen were killed and many were injured in the attacks. Two terrorists who attacked the police station were also killed. Turkey has been a state of alert ever since. It launched airstrikes against Islamic State fighters in Syria and Kurdish militants in northern Iraq and detention of hundreds of suspects at home. The attack is believed to have been carried out by the far-leftist Revolutionary People's Liberation Army Front whose members are among those detained in recent weeks. Well, let's get to you some more international news and global buzz. A man was injured in a gun battle with the police after rallies commemorating the killing of Michael Brown last year turned violent. Four planes close detective shot him after he allegedly fired on their unmarked vehicle. The police said that the victim was hospitalized in a critical condition. Several volleys of gunshots were heard in an amateur video shot near the scene, but it isn't clear where the gunfire came from. Japan's Kyushu Electric Power Company announced that it will restart its Sendai No. 1 reactor tomorrow. The move is seen as an attempt to reboot Japan's nuclear industry in nearly two years after the sector was shut down following the 2011 Fukushima disaster. The 890 megawatt reactor will take around 12 hours to go critical, with power output to start in two to three days. Rescue efforts are underway after Typhoon Surulaw slammed southeastern mainland China and Taiwan that, and killed at least 21 people. The storm left 14 dead in the eastern Chinese city of Wenzhou and Lishui, where heavy rains triggered mudslides and caused houses, houses to collapse. Some sports now. In Indian opener, Murli Vijay will miss the first test against Sri Lanka due to a hamstring injury. Team director Ravi Shastri said that the batsman has not yet recovered from the injury. Vijay sustained the injury in Zimbabwe during India's recent one-day series. He did not bat in either of India's warm-up games in Sri Lanka. He'll be replaced by Lokesh Rahul, who's played only two tests. Vijay has been the most consistent batsman for India in the recent past, scoring over 2,000 runs in 32 tests with an average of over 40. Still under recovery. It's not fully recovered. And we don't want to take a chance. He's, a, he's the informed player. He's had a fabulous run. In test match cricket, you know, he has the ability to play the long innings, which he's shown. So he will be missed because he's, he's an experienced player now. Time now for all the sporting action in Sports Beat. The Indo-Romanian pair of Rohan Bopanna and Florin Mergea crashed out of the City Open after losing to top seeds Bob and Mike Bryan in the men's double semi-finals. The third seeds lost 3-6, 4-6 against their much-experienced American opponents on the hard court. The Bryan brothers will now face the second-seeded Brazil-Croat pair of Marcelo Melo and Ivan Dodic. In the men's finals, J Japan's Kei Nishikori beat big-serving John Eisner in three sets to win the City Open. The second seed broke uh, the American once in the second set and again in the third set to win 4-6, 6-4, 6-4. It was Nishikori's third title of the season and tenth of his career. Anjali Kerber matched Serena Williams for most tournament titles this season after beating out Karolina Slikova in uh, three tight, uh, tight three sets uh, in the finals of the Bank of the West Classic. Kerber crossed, closed out the upcoming Czech player by claiming 6-3, 5-7-6-4 victory. It was Kerber's fourth victory of the year. Well, that's all from us, but as we go, Goddess Kali took over New York City last week, quite literally. The Hindu goddess was displayed on the facade of the iconic Empire State Building. Artist uh, Android Jones designed the fierce portrait of Kali, who is a goddess of time, change, power and destruction, to make the point that Mother Nature needs a fierce avatar to fight the dangers of pollution and extension more now than ever. It was the last artwork in the exhibition called Projecting Change. It also projected pictures of endangered creatures earlier. Take a look at this.